Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is the 18th day of our sunrise, <laughs> of our 30-day sunrise yoga series, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. And I hope that magic beyond your wildest dreams is being unleashed. I hope it's happening now. There is nothing to wait for at the end. Notice what's happening right now. As you progress is how you succeed. So, oh, that's not the quote. <laughs> I made this up years ago. As you proceed is how you succeed. And really, really think about the miracles that are happening for you right now. And if there aren't any that seem apparent, if there's no magic that you're noticing, look more closely. Um, don't forget, recommit. What are What is the devotion? What are you understanding? What's pulling you through this experience? What are you coming to grips with? Reconciling, accepting, releasing. Um, make sure to note it and recommit with your journal. And let's get started because today is one of my absolute favorite topics and I do not like talking a lot, not in videos that have only such limited time for movement. So what I will say is read the description and then <laughs> click on any of the links that have to do with me and you will see hours and hours and hours of interviews and discussions about your menstrual cycle and how you can end your suffering and shift to pain-free, PMS-free, and consistent menstrual cycles, regardless of what professionals who mean very well in the medical field, who work off of a different, um, work off of a different priority, a different set of priorities, regardless of what they've told you about your body and what it's capable of, you don't have to live with suffering and you can get to consistent cycles in a non-medical way. And we have some poses that we're going to look at today that help you activate, help you engage in your four menstrual phases. Because the solution is that when you accommodate and live with the givens that are happening in your body, that are happening in your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual intuitive bodies, when you embrace them and encourage them and accommodate them, your life blooms in a way that is so different because you're not trying to adapt to another way of being if you didn't have your period on a every 28, 27, 28, 29 days. Instead of pretending like you don't have this thing happen that's really important, that's actually affecting your whole body, you could just embrace it and the pain stops because you're not, I guess life doesn't like it when you uh, pretend. <laughs> so, okay, I am so afraid of talking too long about that. So we're going to go right to it. We're going to work with, we're going to look at the poses that activate and help you embrace the cycles. We're going to spend time with each one and then we'll do a um, little meditation at the end. And let's get started with our five Tibetan rituals, also known as, and I like this name better, the Fountain of the Okay, so let's start with our first one, the spinning. Let's see, do I have the radius? Yes, okay. Two feet together, chin is parallel to the ground. So parallel, parallel, ground, chin. That's what that means. I had to explain that the other day, so I apologize if that's confusing. Chin is parallel to the ground. Gaze of the eyes are down. Two shoulders pinned towards the heart, rooting to rise through those shoulders. And as you root to rise with the emphasis on the shoulders down, you stretch through those activated fingers, and now you have this beautiful wing span. Your wings are open. And now from here, we're just gonna start tapping, spinning clockwise, and tap one, two, three, 
four. Five. Bring everything together. Close your eyes. Let the spin catch you. Mm. Coming to the next pose, camel. Pushing in to the ground with every point of contact that touches the ground, the knee, the ankle, maybe the tops of the feet. That is going to anchor you into the ground. Shoulders pinned towards the heart, elbows yearning to see each other. Inhale. One, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale. Don't forget to work where you are, not where I am, because I'm somewhere different every day, as you've noticed. My body is going to do what it's going to do. I'm going through different menstrual cycles as well, and I'm going to do poses that are going to accommodate the cycle I'm in, or I'm going to go through the poses in a way that's going to accommodate what's happening in my body. Starting in the J, supporting my, my lower back, and maybe you're supporting yours. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. One. Two. Three. Four. Remember, you don't have to go all the way down. Five. Next, tabletop. Two fingers point towards the heels. Shoulders pinned to the ground, eyes of the elbows facing the front of the, the short side of the mat. And the elbows, of course, are yearning toward each other. And that's protecting your front side body's joints. Okay, pushing up to tabletop. Neck is gonna break. Neck is gonna look at the sky. Neck is gonna, the gaze is gonna be forward over your knees. Wherever you feel comfortable, don't forget protective grip for your wrists. If you don't know what that means, go to the first video. Inhale. Exhale. <clears throat> Way too, way too tight. Okay, starting over. Inhale. Exhale. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. Five. Keeping that protective grip, my L, my fingers unfold from the L. One. Two. Rolling like a wave. For the upward facing dog. Three. Four. God, sometimes I could just live here. I love downward facing dog. Okay. Now let's look at 
our first pose. The way that we are going to walk through the menstrual phases is in the order that um, we're going to go from beginning to end. We first have to build the event, then we play in the event, then we close the end the event, then we break it down and we move everything out so that we're ready to build the event again. So the follicular phase, what we call soldier phase, because I like to use embodied names for the menstrual phases, is the time when we are incredibly energetic. I wish that medicine had decided to call day one the first day of your follicular phase, of your soldier phase, because you are beginning things, you are starting, you are charging in with full energy, the energy that you gathered while you were in what I call menstrual, what I call priestess phase, what we know is menstrual phase. And I call it priestess because it is a time of solitude, of solemnity, of aloneness. Um, so that is uh, what priestess as is going to kind of do, but there are activities that you do with others that you can do with others that are actually the experiences are heightened when you're in um, menstrual phase. So um, that is a topic for another day. So in soldier phase, you have a lot of energy. And so we want to use a very energetic pose. Power yoga is a wonderful thing to do when you are in soldier phase. The most energetic pose you can do is to stand, right? Standing takes energy. Standing upside down takes a lot of energy. There are three inversions that are classic, that are the classic inversion poses, which are handstand, shoulder stand, and headstand. Today, we're just going to start the beginning of headstand so that you can see it. I need you to watch the screen and not try to take um, verbal cues only because if you turn your head, you could really hurt yourself. So watch the screen, watch me, and then pause and do this part. If you're interested in headstand, there's an entire video about the back series, about inversions, and you can also watch that video. It may be I'll find it, I'll find it. Okay, so for headstand, the first thing that's very important is that you find the flat place. And to find the flat place, you're going to roll around and look. And when you span your arms, I don't have space on this side, so I'm just putting the other arm here. So that's gonna be like a little buffer, but what you're looking for is that sweet spot where it doesn't really hurt to have your weight, the weight of your head, on that spot and when you find it then just kind of take a note of it the next thing you're going to do is you're going to you can let's try holding that spot i've never done that try holding that spot where you're safe and comfortable on top of your head and then you're going to bring your two shoulders your two elbows together touch elbow to elbow no you've got to lift your head sorry i tried so you're going to now figure out your width of your of your um, elbows because this is the base of your triangle. Your triangle is going to have three points. These are the two points at the base, and then your head and your hands that are clasped together. That's going to be the third point. So you've got you're going to find the the base points. And what's so important is that you never move these so what happens is people say oh this is as wide as my headstand needs to be and then they go into headstand and their arms move open 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 and you can't do a headstand like this that's impossible so they just never get up and they say headstand's not for me no what happens is that you commit to the width of your elbows and then you do the, you work slowly into the pose until your body can lift into a pose that has a width for its base that is this wide. The width is not too small. Your body just has to get used to it. This is putting the integrity of the pose ahead of where you might be in your practice. It takes some time. I spent a year building my headstand but you don't have to take a year. I spent a year. That's that's my story. Okay, so 
I now know the width of my elbows. I now know where the flat part of my head is that's going to accommodate lifting my body onto my head. And just an important note, the same amount of weight that you felt when you were just rolling around to figure out the flat place is about how much you're putting on your head. Your elbows, forearm, and the bind of your wrist, of, the, of your hands together, that is doing more work because ultimately the peak of a headstand pose is literally pushing down from the headstand, pushing down and the whole body coming up through the things and all that's left on the ground is the outline of your arms and your hand clasp. That's the peak of the pose. I'm not there, but you want to think about the fact that that's where it's going. And then when you're thinking about grounding in that way, your base gets really strong and you are able to hold that pose. And it's not even a holding. I've held headstand up to 10 minutes. And I did that. I built into that because I was told by a teacher it was a resting pose and I wanted to explore what that would feel like. Today, we're learning it as a power pose. We're learning it as a pose to engage in the powerful energy of soldier phase. So you're going to build very slowly over time, but this might be one of the poses that you work on every day. As you've noticed, I have quite a few poses that I've spent about a year building into. And when you spend over 30 years doing yoga, then you've had time, <laughs> time to build into quite a few poses. Okay, so I've got my width set. I've got my hands clasped. For my hand clasp, I've got my head. So look at that. I've got my hands together. And I put my head in that little thing. You can also do it like this, but I think you cheat yourself of the power of that base. Think about the fact that eventually you want to be able to push down into the base that I described of your hands and your arms. You have no base. The sides of your pinkies cannot hold your body. They can't hold your body weight. And notice that when I do this, my arms expand more easily. It's easier to keep my arms together, my elbow, I mean my base of my triangle with my hands clasped. And I recommend if you do handstand on a regular basis, or if you're going to start doing that, that you always alternate the thumb that's on top because you want to have that yoga as well. Sure, one side might be stronger, but that doesn't mean um, it's supposed to stay stronger. You can have the balance in that way. So you will establish the, writ the width you will clasp your hands. You will move your um, head into the place where your hands come together. The bottoms of your wrists are attached to each other. That's protecting your shoulder cuff. And that's what you do anytime you've got your hands clasped. Okay. Then you're going to walk up. So notice what happens. I'm going to walk up. Shoulders are pinned again towards my heart. I'm going to walk up. My gaze is between my feet. It's looking back to the back of the mat. I'm going to walk up until my body is straight. And then when my body's straight, I will do a little. I'll start with one leg up, pushing into the base, not into my head. And then my body will go even more straight. And as it goes more straight, I can bring the other leg up. And then I can bring them both together. I'm clutching my core a little bit. And then they can both press up into headstand. Remembering I have arrived. I am home. When we build slowly, day by day, this pose becomes one of a balance rather than of strength. You've heard my little lecture, lecture about muscle muscle bound yogis it's a very odd thing to me because yoga is balance it's not force mm. once you come to straight you can hang out here as long as you want you can play with the legs do whatever you want today we are taking it easy 
So I think it's been like two or three days since I've done a headstand. So it's feeling a little rusty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, always breathing. And you get a little ab workout at the end. You try to lower super, super slowly. The inverse, the counter pose to headstand is child's pose. And interestingly enough, child's pose is a great pose for priestess phase. And we'll get there in just a few minutes. The next pose. So I hope you have done that. I hope you stopped the video and did the part. And maybe your legs never came off the ground. And that is yoga. That's more important than getting your legs off the ground and shooting them up and wow, and not knowing if you're going to stand and then falling over and then hurting your back and then having to spend a few weeks while it heals and so on, right? We could just build diligently or we can do that and then say, okay, now I'll build diligently. The next pose is for the next phase, which is, I call it peacemaker phase. There is this phase, it's lovely. It's when you are going from, when you're getting ready to ovulate, you ovulate and then you're, um, moving into luteal. So you go from pre-ovulation, ovulation, early luteal. That time is characterized as a time of massive togetherness. You're extroverted naturally in the soldier phase and in the peacemaker phase. But I call it peacemaker phase because people are wildly attracted to you. There's nothing you can do wrong in the world and everybody wants to engage with you. You're sending out these chemicals and people are drawn to you um, physically. You're, uh, you're, ex you're extroverted, so they're emotionally drawn to you. Well, you're open and you're also um, emotionally tuned in. So you're also more empathic. So an exchange can happen rather than in soldier phase where it's more like you're extroverted, you're out in the world, but get out of the way because you are out in the world. And then intuitively, you are starting to turn up the volume on intuition, but it's not high in, in this phase. So you're more willing to let other, let people who you may not even allow around you normally you're more willing, but you're also very clear with your boundaries um, because you're still a person. <laughs> so um, this time of togetherness is one where you are seeing and being seen. So, and you've got full energy. You've got full energy still. So uh, physically. So the best pose for this is going to activate the feeling and help help um, embrace that swirl that is peacemaker phase is dancer's pose. And we've done dancer's pose before and dancer's pose is this time we're going to do it. Um, I don't think I've ever done it. Forward. So we'll do it. We'll do it forward today. Okay. So in dancer's pose, we're going to ground into the legs. We're going to start with the left side. So I'm going to ground into the left side. And I like to cue the sides based on the supporting side because that's the one that's doing the work. That's where you really want to focus. The right leg's going to do some fancy, fun things, but the left side is what's doing the work. So you're going to ground down into the left side. You're going to flip that right foot up, catching it with the right hand. Your hand can be on the ankle to start and eventually... No, we're doing dancer's pose, not bow. So your hand's going to stay on the ankle. The knee is going to point towards the ground. And then you're going to bring, as the leg comes back, as the leg kicks back behind you, the body kicks back. The leg kicks back, the body, I mean, the body moves forward. And you're going to eventually kick up, 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 up. And there's your dancer's pose. So you'll kick up and back. And then you'll bring this other arm up. And now you have, you look like a little, you look like a chalice or like a little goblet. <laughs> you can hold things. You can hold energy. You can hold feelings. You can embrace other people, want to drink from your cup. And you are able to allow them to engage in a powerful way with you.
And that's dancer's pose. And from the side, it's much prettier from the side, in my opinion. Oh, I don't think I can rotate like that. Okay. I'll do the other side because I just did this side. So that was the right side. Let's do the left side. Mm. Mm. Okay. And kick up and back and up and back. The fingers are in the uh, Jai Mudra. So fingertip. Um. Mm. Kicking up. Gaze towards the ground. Gaze is forward. Gazes to the hand, grounding in the right side body. The more you ground, the higher your leg can go because you're rooting to accommodate the stretch and fold out. The third menstrual phase is now we're moving into the introverted times. So we're going to turn in towards ourself because we are winding down to priestess when we will have the lowest amount of energy of, excuse me, of the four menstrual phases. And then we'll store up the energy and then we'll be in soldier phase where we'll have the highest amount of energy. So in luteal phase, you are, which is what is the medical name for it. And I call it queen phase. You are very aware. You're emotionally tuned in. You're mentally strong. You're physically, your energy is going up and down and up and down. You have a lot. You have none. And intuitively, it's starting to turn on. Okay. It's not going to be as high as priestess, but it's starting to turn up. And so we want to ground. We want to create stability, especially because our energy is variable. And we know where we're going. So we're not going to fully turn off, but we're going to get in that direction. And a great pose for grounding. And I like to think of grounding and, ex and expanding, but only within your realm is Hanumanasana, split. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to prepare for split. It's 6.30 in the morning, so I'm not really going to, I don't see myself going all the way down, but this is how you start split. You're going to, I'm at tabletop, I bring my right foot between my two hands, and from here, I'm, I'm already, I've already started the pose. I have arrived, I am home. And now from here, I'm just going to lean back, and that is half of Hanumanasana. You can go up from here and you can lean forward and there you are in the pose. You can also start walking your leg back and walking this leg forward. This is Hanumanasana, okay? If you just walk your leg back, that's lunge. If you walk a little bit forward, that's Hanumanasana. And then from here, you keep stretching the foot your focus is on keeping that squareness in the hips. The bottom, you can let them open up a little bit, but not too much because we're doing front flip, front split. And then bolsters are great here because as you lower, the more contact you have with the earth, the easier it is for your legs to, for the muscles to relax and the relaxation creates the stretch. So working with the bolster is a great idea here. And Tanumanasana, what's going to happen is you're going to, you're rooting, you're grounded, you're expanding. The um, shoulders are facing the front foot. And then you will bring your hands together overhead, clasped, steeple grip overhead. And there's Hanumanasana. And of course, you can always sleep your pose. Let's take it on the other side. See, what did I just hit? My book. Okay. This time I'm going to go through it very quickly because we're coming up on time. Squaring my hips, I think first. Anchor back. And that's the beginning of how Nirmanasana. That's the first half of the pose. I can also. Leave this knee back, walk this foot forward, and keep walking it out until I get to 
a point where I'm comfortable. And today I'm not going to make it to split. That's okay. I am going to support where I am. Back erect. Feeling that twist. Steeple grip. Hands over head. Making sure to alternate them on top. Mm. Days can look up as well. Up or forward. And of course you can sleep your pose. Sleeping just means to bend your body forward. Okay, so that is a great pose to activate that time called queen phase when we are taking notes for the things that need to change in our world, the awarenesses. Mm. Lastly, we have priestess phase. And the best pose when you're menstruating, particularly if you happen to have pain, this is going to help offer some relief when I was in pain, when I, for many, many years, when I had my period before I um, arrived to the solution that I work with now and I, and I don't have pain anymore, when I had that pain, I would ask yoga teachers what pose to do. And every yoga teacher said, open child's pose, right? Right, like this. So to get there, you start in lightning bolt. You open the two knees to touch the two long sides of the mat. You'll walk your body forward and your hands will relax. And in contrast to an activated child's pose, which is what we do in yang yoga, make sure that your shoulders are pinned towards your heart, of course. This pose is going to be like a yin. So no activation, no pushing, but your body's still resting between your knees. Now, this is what you're told to do. When I was on my period, and I was in pain, this did absolutely nothing for me. But it's what research says and what it is doing, because it's for menstrual cramps. It's stretching the front side body um, for the cramps without taxing the body. Doing something like a back bend to stretch your front side body is a way to stretch, but it takes so much energy, and your body's using all of its energy to break to break down and release and express um, the uteral lining, of course. And your, your other bodies are also pushing out all of this stuff. So every body, your emotional, your physical, your mental, and your intuitive bodies are all doing spring cleaning. And that takes a lot of effort. So you don't want to tax your body any more than it's already working. And that is why you need a passive pose for your priestess menstrual phase, the time of your flow. And I'm teaching this one, but honestly, the way to end the suffering is to treat yourself in alignment with what your body needs rather than um, forcing yourself to misalign with a way of life that your body doesn't expect to have to work with. And when there's a mismatch, then there's pain, right? Or we can clap or we can clash. So that was your journey through the four menstrual phases as well as four poses that help to activate them. Let's all move our bodies down to Shavasana and today I'm going to support my lower back by supporting my knees for my Shavasana. And I always recommend that you make accommodations for different injuries with bolsters, pillows, blocks, including your Shavasana. We're just, a, we're a lot over. So we will only stay here for one more minute. And don't worry, we will get to the, we will get to explore the meditative aspects of yoga in the coming days.
Let's deepen that breath. Inhale. Exhale. Wiggle your toes, your fingers, your wrists, your ankles, your legs, your arms. Move over. Shift your body to the right side. Everything stacks on top of the right side of the body. Push against the ground with the left hand. And come to easy pose. And from here, you did it. Day 18. You are at day 18, and that is incredible. We've learned so many poses, breathing styles, and today, and applications. I sincerely hope that you do start to lean into the givens of each menstrual phase, especially if you are somebody who is suffering with menstrual difficulties because you do not have to suffer and the medical process does not cure it. It treats the symptoms and quiets them. But that means that the degeneration is still happening in the body. So we want to heal, and the way we heal is through loving kindness shown towards our body, and you would be surprised what that requires. Regardless, you can start by engaging with the phases through these four yoga poses. Thank you for joining me today. I wish you, from the bottom of my heart, Joy, ease, space, and grace. Satnam Namaste.